Hello guys, this is Universal Giant, welcome back to Let's Play the Pokemon Trading Card Game game. Last time, we beat the Water Club, and today, we'll be going with one of my favorite decks against the Science Club. Now, you may be asking yourself whether or not Science is an actual kind of Pokemon, and it's not. But there were enough different kinds of cards that Science kind of made for its own, maybe? Like, since there are only six kinds of energy in the game, there are different... You can only make so many clubs out of different energy cards, and since there are only six kinds of energy, plus colorless, I guess, they could only make so many with what they had, so they decided to make a couple of different ones. And I guess science they thought was one good enough. Also, I've been doing a terrible job of completely ignoring the fact that this guy is here. This is a very weird guy. I'll let him speak for himself. He's not kidding. He was an action. I he may still be doing performances, I don't know. But he was fairly popular at the time and he did like Pokémon, but completely unknown out of Japan, as far as I know. That's not how the Pokerap goes. Sure, why not? So this duel can either go really fast or really, really slow. But either way, you'll get to see what my deck is based on. So the deck that I'm using is one of my favorites from when I was a kid, and one that I actually ran in real life. And it's based around two main families of Pokémon. One being the Squirtle, Wartortle, Blastoise family that you saw Amy use in the last video, and I don't think I went over Blastoise's Poke Power, which allows you to attach as many water energies to your water Pokémon per turn as you like. It really helps to get the offense going. But we'll see whether or not we're able to actually make use of it. So, I, did I really draw two Blastoise in the very beginning? And I thought that's fantastic. So I don't know if I went over Farfetch'd in the last video. If you have one energy, you can do 30 damage on a 50-50, but never be able to use that attack again. Or you could do 30 damage for three energy. It's really a toss-up. He's got a Drowsy, pretty standard. And Slowpoke, which I guess this one is also weak to Psychic, but it's a Psychic type as opposed to a Water type. Anyway, we have a Water Energy, we have a Squirtle. Let's hope we get the Paralysis. Or at least hope that it fails its Leak Slap. Because it's always annoying when it does. This is Imakuni's trademark card, which does nothing but confuse the active Pokémon of the trainer who used it. which accurately describes anybody who would use that card. It literally does nothing that confuse yourself. It serves no benefit whatsoever. I have no idea why that card exists, but it does. So I guess we'll attach this to... I don't know, we'll hang on to it. We may not get another water energy for a little while. Unfortunately, that Paralysis did away with its Confusion, but we'll be able to knock it out this turn anyway, so it doesn't matter. Let's put another Squirtle down, just in case, and knock this thing out. Now, the annoying thing about Imakuni's duels is that all of them are six prize cards, which gets annoying. Now, Hypno is one card that I'm not all that familiar with. Let's say Prophecy... Look at three cards on the top of either player's deck. Well, you don't need to do that. You're the AI. You know that already. In Dark Mind, this is an attack that you may see in my deck, because I have a Gengar that does the exact same attack, but it requires three Psychic Energy, so this thing's really not going to be able to do much to us anyway. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do much to it for a while, so we could be here a little bit. 
I'm guessing we're gonna have a bit of a stalemate for a little while. I apologize for this, but there's not too much I can do about it. At least not until I get a War Turtle. Then we can start pumping up the damage. So I think he's building up his Gold Duck back there. So that thing has a basic attack. Hyper Beam doesn't do all that much damage, but it discards an energy card attached to the Pokemon that it's used against, so that could get a bit annoying. I guess I'll build up the other Squirtle, just in case this thing starts to take damage. Imakuni is not all that difficult of an opponent, but if you don't have the right setup, it could take an obnoxiously long time to deal with him. I guess I'll just keep building those guys up, waiting to get the evolution cards for them. I tweaked this deck a bit. I used to have three Seal and two Dugong, but I only have one Dugong because I wanted to add a couple of different cards. And the thing is, I don't want to discard my two Blastoise, because they would be really, really helpful. Other, if I didn't have those Blastoise in my hand, I would have no problem discarding it. But I only have one other Blastoise, and there's a chance one of them is the prize card. Or one of them's at the very bottom of the deck. This is getting really annoying. The three Pokémon that I have can do no more than 10 damage per turn. If I had any- if I got any other Pokémon card, I would be able to do substantially more damage. Now there's the other card that I'd like to show off, but since I haven't gotten a Ghastly yet, which completely baffles me, I can't show it off. And since most of his cards are weak to Psychic, it would have been perfect. But this is what happens in any card game. It really just... How have I not run into those cards yet? What the heck? I'm drawing nothing but energy. This can happen whenever you're playing a card game. The odds just may not be in your favor, and there's nothing you can do about it. Just what is he going to bring in after I knock it out? I don't think anything he has can even do me much damage. Headbutt's only going to do 10, and Golduck can't do anything without another water energy. Might as well leave this thing in because it's the most expendable thing I have, just in case it is able to knock me out. Another haunt! I can't do anything with these cards! This is awful! So now he's actually trying to do damage to me. I can't believe the battle has lasted this long. Okay, now we have a Pokémon Breeder, which allows us to play Blastoise. So let's get some stuff going here. Uh, first of all, let's retreat you. Actually, let's put... Let's waste a Psychic Energy for the retreat. Bring you in, start doing some damage. So that's going to be enough to do 40. I don't think we're going to need to waste another water energy on you. I guess we can hold off on the others until we need them. Because I would only be able to do a maximum of 60 damage with Hydro Pump anyway. So there's no point in putting the additional energy on this thing yet. Unfortunately, we can't use our Pokemon power while we're paralyzed. Unless we evolve the other Squirtle. So now we can use it, which is convenient. But again, I think I'll hold off on this until I'm able to do something with it. So this is a bit of a lackluster way to start off the video, not gonna lie. And I'm incredibly frustrated with how often I'm getting the tails against me. Let's get something in here that would be a lot easier to deal with. Maybe Psyduck? That'd be nice. So hopefully he's not able to do anything with this thing, but confuse it. It's always fun to have so much trouble with an opponent who readily confuses himself. I can't believe I haven't even gotten a Ghastly, but what's going on here? It's... Anytime you're playing a card game, you just never know. There's our Ghastly. So Fury Swipes, flip three coins, do ten damage per heads. 
Now I can actually play the Ghastly and start doing something with it. So Ghastly has no weakness, has no retreat cost. Really, I only have this thing here because of Haunter, but we'll see Haunter. So let's attach another Water Energy to Blastoise, and again, I could be attaching more Water Energies, but I want to hold on to them just in case they'd be more useful later. Even if this Blastoise gets knocked out, we have the other one. So Rain Dance will still be in play. But I want to keep them there for the freedom, just so I can use it as necessary. I can't believe I have all three Haunters in my hand right now. This is what, probably my favorite card of all of the cards in the original set, the Fossil set here. Mostly because Haunter has the Pokemon Power Transparency, where you flip a coin any time an attack does anything to Haunter, and if you get a heads, that attack fails. In addition, it has an attack that puts the defending Pokemon to sleep, meaning that it would only have a 50% 50 50 chance of waking up it to attack you. So between the sleep and transparency, your opponent will only have a 25% chance of doing anything to you in the next turn, which is really, really handy, provided that luck is on your side, which, let's be honest, it almost never is. But in principle, it's super nice. So this is the gold duck. All he's left with is the gold duck that has damage on it already, and even though he removed the water energy from me, he can knock it out this turn. And at long last, we have defeated the almighty Imakuni. That was a lot more effort than it was actually worth. And I believe he gives us one of every booster pack. So this is the last one we haven't seen, Evolution. So if you're building a deck that's based on Evolutions, as the name implies, this is the probably the booster pack you want. So now what we were really here to do... Fight the guys in the science gym place thing! I guess we'll start with you, why not? I'm sure it is. It has more colors, that means it's more complicated. For a second I thought he was giving me the finger. He certainly doesn't look very happy. So again, since I've already explained pretty much how this deck works, there isn't too much to explain left. A lot of the Pokémon that you'll see in this particular area, that is probably the worst thing that could have happened if I... Oh, I thought it was Poison. I guess that it's good that it's not. So I have War Turtle to fall back on if I have to. I thought that was Poison. If that was Poison, we would have been in trouble. Yeah, the only reason I'm not panicking at this point is because we have War Turtle. When you evolve a Pokémon, you alleviate it of status ailments. Meaning, once we evolve it, we are no longer paralyzed. And... Hopefully... No, we would have only avoided damage by doing that anyway. We wouldn't have avoided getting paralyzed. Which didn't happen. So depending on what we draw here... Uh, yeah, he doesn't have anything on his bench. Let's, let's discard this hand and see what we get. Got a Blastoise, that works out perfectly. So now if we get one more Water Energy, Hydro Pump will do 50. And this game turned around in a heartbeat, didn't it? After the Imakuni fight, that was really nice to see. So let's move on to the next guy. Eric with a K. Let's try that again! Pretend that we didn't attach the energy card to the wrong Pokémon. 
Pretend you have no idea what I'm talking about. Now I can actually show off what Ghastly does. Ghastly has an energy conversion attack, which I never use and I'm not even sure what it does. Two energy cards from your discard pile and attach it to Ghastly at the cost of 10 health. Not all that great. Coughing has an attack, which is particularly annoying, in that it does status regardless of whether or not it gets a heads or a tails. But it takes two energy to do. And the reason why I chose this deck is because a lot of the Pokémon in this particular... I almost called it a gym, in this club are weak to Psychic. So in addition to doing double the damage, we've got this thing paralyzed. But a lot of the Pokémon in this place are going to be poisoned simply because there really wasn't anywhere else to put the poison types, you know? So let's evolve this thing into Haunter, finally see Haunter in action. We don't get an attack that does additional damage, nor do we get additional health, but transparency is so nice, I don't care. So now that he's asleep, he only has a 50% chance of waking up. And if he wakes up, he still only has a 50% chance of doing any damage to us. But since he didn't attach the grass energy to coughing, he wouldn't have been able to do anything to us anyway. The thing is, with our Pokémon power, and I think with most, if not all, Pokémon powers, if you are inflicted with a status ailment, it does nothing. So his attack would do 30 damage if he got a heads, and now with transparency, if we get a heads, it does nothing. So combined with this, and the fact that we have Nightmare as our attack, he only has a 50% chance of waking up, a 50% chance of hitting a Horn Hazard, and a 50% chance of getting through our transparency. So this Nidoran only has a 1 in 8 chance of actually hitting us, at least until he evolved it. So that attack did actually go through and we did take 30 damage from it. So let's get Lapras some more energy, I suppose. I don't think he has anyone else on his bench. And if he has a Nido King, we may be in a little more trouble. Because that's probably the only thing that would wake him up if he evolved it. But he doesn't, so we're safe, at least for now. He just put Ekans on the bench, and he didn't attach the energy to Ekans, he attached it to the Nidorino, which is probably going to die this turn. But I guess I can start powering up Articuno. I don't want to get rid of these water energies quite yet. Professor Oak is there if I want a new hand, but I think I like my hand just the way it is. So this thing is probably also weak to poison. This is an interesting attack I don't see very often. I'd really rather not switch in my Pokémon. Dang. So now I have to switch something else in. Articuno wouldn't be able to attack next turn. I guess I could switch in Lapras. But it does nothing to me. I don't know if that still forces me to switch. It doesn't force me to switch! I don't think I've ever seen that before. I thought it only affected what happened to Haunter, not the effects of the entire attack. And all effects of that attack, but it only what's done to Haunter. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's actually how we would have played it out if we weren't actually playing the video game of it. Because it says only what's done to Haunter, and I don't know if switching your opponent out qualifies as being attacked. I guess I'll have to look into that. Not that anybody really cares. Let's add some more guys to the bench. Let's power up Articuno. I should have checked this thing's weakness. I'm pretty sure it's Psychic. Most poison are weak to Psychic. Like I said, since there are only six kinds of energy in this game, a lot of Pokémon have been condensed into other types they wouldn't necessarily be part of in the normal game. 
and the ghost family is in the psychic family. That's just kind of how it works. Now, I forget how much Articuno's attack does. Freeze Dry does 30 with the chance of paralysis, so it wouldn't knock it out. So unless he puts down a bench Pokemon in this turn, he's more than likely going to lose. Because we only have one Pokemon to knock out to clear his field. Now, generally, it's not the Ghost family that's pulling their weight when I play this deck. But because we're facing a lot of poison types that are weak to Psychic, it kind of works out that way here. So there's Victory Bell. I don't think I have this card. It was either this or Vile Plume I was missing. I forget which. Well, we got two Victory Bell. So there's one more guy we have to face in here. And he seems a lot happier than the other two. So we have... Oh, that is the worst card to start with, because we can't even attack until we put down three energy. We have the three energy, but we can't even attack until we attach them all. And that won't be for three turns. So that could be irritating. So Zubat can't attack either until it has two energy. One only does confusion, the other one saps energy. So it won't be doing too much damage. Hopefully we can survive until then. Let's put down some water energy. Let's make this take a little bit longer so we have time to power ourselves up. Finally get something else down there. So we have some turns to evolve that thing when we get the chance. So this should buy us a little bit of time. And then if we get a Professor Oak, we'll be in business. I don't know if I want to attach quite yet, because we'll almost certainly get Blastoise in play, and then we'll decide who to attach the Water Energy to. We won't be in a hurry to do it, since we'll be able to do it at any point that we want to without the restriction on our energy attachment. So he did Leech Life as opposed to try to confuse me. Not sure if that was the best strategy. But either way, we have a Blastoise, so we can attach Water Energy at will. I guess we could... Uh, hold on to it. So Blizzard will do 50 damage. And it would have done an additional 10 damage to every Pokémon on his bench if we flipped the heads. But instead, we did damage to our own bench. Since we have a Blastoise and it has 100 health, I don't necessarily care. So I'll probably just keep doing Blizzard. So there's the Gengar. And it has the Pokemon power that allows you to move one damage counter between your opponent's Pokemon per turn. Which can be helpful when used in combination with Dark Mind, because this attack allows you to put an additional damage counter on any of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it's interesting. I'm not sure if I'd want to attach these energies yet, probably not. So let's do another Blizzard. Knock out the Spearow. And do 10 damage to Pidgeotto. If this thing has 60 health, yeah, now we'll be able to knock it out this turn. That worked out beautifully. Unfortunately, it has Whirlwind, which will force us to switch out. But that said, since we're allowed to put down as many energies, at water energies onto water Pokémon as we want per turn, we can attach three to Blastoise, retreat, and use Blizzard anyway. Screw your whirlwind.
So you'll notice we tend to get a lot of the same cards. I don't know if it's completely random, it, or it just kind of works out that way. But here's the master of the science club, Rick. I can't get enough of the opening. So I guess we'll put out Ghastly first, because just like Scyther in the Haymaker, this thing has zero retreat cost. So if there's a better option for me, I can pull it out without any energy wasting. But a lot of the Pokémon that he has are Poison-type. So they'll mostly be weak to Psychic. And I think a lot of the cards that he'll be using are similar to what we have seen before. The Grimer, I think we've seen before. Porygon we have not. It's an interesting Pokémon in that it allows you to change your opponent's weakness and your resistance. But it doesn't do any actual damage, which is weird. But I think we've seen the other Pokémon already. I don't know if I want to... Uh, yeah, let's do it. Just in case the paralysis didn't kick in, I didn't want to take any damage I didn't have to. If we were lucky enough to get a Haunter, that'll make it a little easier. Not counting on it, though. Yeah, if he happens to get another Grass Energy, we may be in a bit of trouble. Got a Gengar, no Haunter. Not the ideal scenario. I guess we'll run with it. There are a lot of other things I'd like to talk about with this game, but I'm still aware of the fact that most people who are watching this have probably not seen the game before, at least those of you that are among my regular viewers. I had a... you know, I thought I had a War Turtle in there. So I don't want to spend too much time distracting from the game itself. I'd rather make sure everybody has a handle on what's going on before we start going off on sidetracks. Because there's plenty of stuff I'd like to talk about. I'll just hold off on it until everyone's a little more familiar with it. Now, Porygon, since it is resistant to Psychic, will not be taking any damage from Ghastly. So I'll switch into Squirtle. Since it only has 30 health, it shouldn't be too much trouble to take out. Unless it switches its resistance to water, in which case it might get a little bit annoying. I am really annoyed that I'm not getting any better cards than this. So he'll probably switch his resistance to water, and then force us to switch in Ghastly to knock it out. Or he'll retreat it, I'm not sure. Yeah, so he switched his resistance to water, so we won't be doing him any damage with Squirtle. But fortunately for us, that means he's no longer resistant to Psychic. So I'm not sure if I want to use that Professor Oak or not yet. But thankfully he hasn't paralyzed us yet. So we have a Pokemon Breeder and we have a Gengar. But I wouldn't be able to attack if I used the Gengar. Let's tr play a little bit risky. Attach the energy anyway. And assuming he's not able to knock us out this turn, which isn't likely because he's paralyzed, we'll be able to evolve into a Gengar next turn. So let's do this. And since we'll be knocking it out anyway, let's move a damage counter off of this thing and onto something that will cause it to be knocked out. That's the beautiful thing about the curse power. You can remove a damage counter from one Pokémon, place it on another, and if it knocks it out, you get to draw a prize card without finishing your turn. 
which is really nice. So now we can do Dark Mind, and not only will we knock out the Grimer, we can put an additional damage counter, this time on the Coughing, which will knock that one out as well. So we just took three prize cards in one turn. And with any luck, if... Oh, he did put down another. I was going to say, it would have been really nice if we could have knocked that thing out too. To take the game right there, but it didn't work out that way. So we have Bill here. Hopefully this makes our options a little more interesting. I don't think it does, because we can't evolve the Haunter. And... There really isn't much else for us to do, regardless of all the cards that we drew. I would like to show off some of the cards he just put down, because I don't think I have a Mewtwo yet. There's one Mewtwo here, which allows you to absorb energy from the discard pile, and do 40 damage with Cyburn. And there's another one, which I think you might be able to get from the booster packs, I'm not sure. Psychic does 10 plus 10 more damage for each energy on the opponent. And this one allows it to prevent damage and effects of attacks at the cost of an energy card. So Mewtwo is not super powerful. But it's Mewtwo. So I did damage to that Mewtwo because it had 70 HP. So if he wanted to try to bring that thing in, I would have been able to knock it out anyway. So he just used a trainer card which served as a Professor Oak, but for the opponent. So they had to shuffle their cards into their deck and draw a new hand. So none of the cards that I had in my hand before are still there. I Actually, I don't even know why I'm wasting my time with this thing. Just knock it out. And that's the Science Club. So like I said, the deck that I'm using right now is probably my favorite deck to run both in this game and in real life when I was a kid. I just loved the Haunter that's in it, because there's only a 25% chance of your opponent actually being able to do you any damage. And since people are already familiar with the Haymaker deck, I might as well show off what's, what exactly is in this deck. You've seen it already. I have 4-3-3, three, three, Squirtle, Wartortle, Blastoise. And I have a couple of breeders in here, so you can get up to Blastoise if necessary, but I might consider putting a fourth Blastoise if I had it. I originally had three Seal and two Dugong, but I switched those two out in favor of an additional Lapras and the Articuno, which we just got before. And like the Ghastly family, I specifically have this Ghastly as opposed to this one, because I like this one better. And like I said, with transparency, this probably makes it my favorite card in the game. And I also have a couple of Gengar in here as well. You've seen how useful it can be. But that's going to do it for the science deck. Or the science club. And next time, we'll pick a different card deck. I'll s I may consider starting to do some of the ones that you've suggested so far. There are a couple of interesting ones. I saw a number of people were interested in seeing a deck that used Grass, or specifically Nidoking, and another one for exclusively fighting. But there are a couple of other ones I'm interested to try as well, so we'll see what happens. This is Universal Giant, and I'll see you next time.